everyone it's Leilani welcome back to my channel so today I wanted to give you a quick flip through of my newly completed pieces of me album if you've been following along over here for a minute you may have seen that one of my latest videos was flipping through my also newly completed pieces of home album so I will link that below along with the uh, previous process videos and flip throughs and all of that for these other two uh, parts of the Pieces of Life collection from Allie Edwards, Pieces of Play and Pieces of the Past that I've worked on on YouTube a couple years ago. So all of these videos I will link below and today we are going to be just going over Pieces of Me. Okay, I tried to get it as up close as I can with getting everything in the frame. So we're going to hope that this works out. So for uh, both of these projects that I worked on this month, Pieces of Home and Pieces of Me, I did work on them over on Patreon as a part of a like uh, catch up of some of the scrapbooking uh, little projects that I was hoping to get done here early in the year and it was really fun and both of these were something that I really had um, I was excited to work on in the past but I never got around to doing them so I thought that this was the perfect time to embark on both of these little travelers notebook storytelling adventures so for pieces of me this one was super fun and I'm pretty sure this was the first one in Allie's bigger umbrella of all of the these projects, the Pieces of Life series. Um, I've been kind of going back on her videos and it looks like maybe it was called Pieces of Us at one point, but also Pieces of Life. It's labeled as Pieces of Life on her website. So I think that's what I'm going to go with. And then all of these are individual little notebooks that can go within that uh, storytelling umbrella. So for Pieces of Me, this one is a self-portrait adventure. And there's a lot of fun little things here at the beginning of the book that kind of have tips and things to let you know about different um, self-portrait ideas. I mean, I did what I could. I didn't go too in-depth with any of these self-portraits, but it was really fun to take pictures that maybe I wouldn't normally take and tell stories that I would not normally tell. Now, just like all the other ones I've mentioned uh, before, that there is a actual schedule because this is a community-based project. So originally, when Allie introduced all of these projects, it was for a certain week of the year. Of course, you can do these at any time, just like me. I did them completely a totally different year than they were announced, but it is fun to follow along with the community. So whenever these were originally announced, you did, you know, the idea was to do one of these for every day of the week. For mine, I just kind of batched them in a couple process videos over on Patreon. So for the first one here, we have feet. So for these first few, I feel like this is a little bit of a vulnerable project because you are taking pictures of yourself that maybe you wouldn't normally take. Now, feet and hands, those I didn't go into depth in any way. I just kind of quickly snapped something. This is just a picture of my feet as they normally are. I'm almost always wearing socks and house shoes. Definitely socks. I'm just a sock girl. So I have a picture here with my living room in the background, just like a typical day. Um, I do kind of like to take aesthetically pleasing photos. So I enjoy having like my pretty shelves in the background. That just is a part of me. And so even though Someone else might not find that valuable for me. I like to look at photos like that. So I definitely tried to get aesthetically pleasing photos in the best way that I could. Now, just like with these other pro projects, it's a, it's a lot of repetition here. So the way that the Traveler's Notebook is formatted, you have the 4x8 typical um traveler's notebook size page here and then you also have this smaller one that I think is roughly like a five by five or a little bit bigger than a four by four and then the prompt is in the middle and then you have another space of equal size on the bottom so the way that Allie has typically done this is she would have her journaling on this lower section here so that's just kind of what I went with and then just depending on the different prompt or whatever I was talking about sometimes I would print a larger photo here and would just decorate this smaller section or sometimes I would flip it and I would decorate the larger section and have a smaller photo. So that totally just depended on the way that the picture was taken and what looked better. So here we have feet. I did go along with the same journaling prompt idea that Allie did. 
of repeating these feet. And I just told different stories. Um, you gotta, you have to kind of think outside the box for a project like this for sure. But I just tried to talk about, I did tell the sock story, like what I just told you guys. And also that my feet love being pampered. I love to do foot masks and things like that. They help me to get from one place to another and complete all of my tasks for the day. And of course that they are happy to be out and about again, especially after being cooped up inside after a week of snow. They are ready for more places and more adventures, new paths to walk and things to discover. So very fun and it's just a good time. It's, it's easy, this project, after you take your photos and do your journaling, the actual putting together of the project is so easy because it's very uniform. It's the same thing over and over. So I feel like it makes for putting together the project to be the simple part, but to actually try to take the photos and do the journaling, that's a little bit more tricky. So then for number two, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with hands and, you know, I thought about taking pictures of me doing like in the act of doing different things like a more, um, what's the word, like in action shot or a candid shot, but I ended up just going for just a photo of my hands. Again, I like the aesthetics of having the photos in the back or the, the pictures on my wall in the background show off my ring, which I don't always wear and I happen to be wearing it that day so that kind of inspired me to take that type of a picture but of course you could take a more action shot of you doing something that you typically do cleaning your house playing with your scrapbook supplies petting your dog uh, holding someone's hand anything like that would totally work so this one the same idea I have the larger photo the smaller decorative portion which by the way I did use um Pink Fresh Studio I, I think it's a few different collections but I did use Pink Fresh Studio just bits and pieces that I had left over from projects from last year so I used that and I used some washi for my stash including this random gold washi here with the little stars that I used for each um, story. Then also I did on each one, I used this tiny phrase stamp, um, which it is an Allie Edwards phrase stamp. I don't know anything further, but it's a really cute one. There's a lot of great words on there. Like, um, this first one says document. This one says this photo note to self. I use this photo again, gratitude, in progress, and reflections. So a lot of great little words there to pop into that little opening. So again, with these hands, I did the same idea as these feet, these hands repeated. And I just talked about all of the things that my hands tend to do on a daily basis. So it says these hands work so hard every day to keep the flow going around the house, ironing shirts, laying out pants, prepping meals, making beds, doing all the things needed to get our day started. These hands wash lots of dishes, do tons of laundry, scrub so many spots in our home. They are the hands that keep order. Then I go on to talk about how they're creative and how they're always um, touching and comforting and petting all of the, the fur babies around here for sure. I take care of the majority of the animals uh, throughout the day, so I wanted to include that as well. Then moving on to prompt number three, this one was face forward. Now, this is where I think that these prompts start to get a little tricky, especially if you're not used to taking photos of yourself. But I also think that that's why a project like this is so valuable because being in front of um, being the forefront, the main character of your scrapbooking is important and you don't have to do it all the time if you don't feel comfortable with it, but it is important to be in your photos. You want to be able to be a part of the stories that you're telling. And for me, um, maybe with my age, I am from a, uh, a selfie type generation. I'm 37 and I've definitely taken a lot of selfies, a lot of pictures of myself. So it comes natural to take pictures of myself. And also I, um, do not have children. So I am kind of the main character, the majority of the time of my scrapbooks. And I really love that. I love that I'm continuously telling my story and telling different facets of my story and I can really relate to Allie um, and many things that she talks about with what scrapbooking does for her and it kind of teaches her about herself she's mentioned before and I can relate to that so much. That's a huge part of scrapbooking for me as well. So I love trying out different projects like this. I think it's so fun and for this particular um 
prompt face forward. I felt like this one was a little vulnerable because although I even I do take a lot of selfies, I tried to take one that was really straight ahead. I wasn't turning my head at any special angle. I wasn't trying to have like this really cutesy photo. I was just trying to take an honest photo of myself straight ahead, what I looked like that day, and just kind of talk about in my journaling um, something about me right now. You know, this is me, age 37. And then I just chatted about some of the things that are true to me at this point in my life. Again, with this one, I switched it up. I did the smaller photo because it, it wouldn't really work. I would have to crop it so much to make it fit in this space. So I just decorated this side and then I just made this one a little bit smaller at roughly like a four by four and then just added on pattern paper in the background as a border. Also, any of these little circle pieces or the hearts, I just uh, freehand cut out the hearts and then these circles, I used my circle punch. I think it's like a two and a half inch circle punch. And these came out of a cut apart a sheet that was in one of the Pink Fresh collections. So that worked out as well. Then moving on to the prompt eyes closed. So as we keep going, there's also a few prompts where you are still um, taking a photo of yourself, but in kind of a more specific way. And so this was a little more creative take on things. So with eyes closed, I was trying to think of what I could take a photo of and Allie also inspired me. I was looking back a lot at her projects, as many of us do whenever we are embarking on one of her projects that she has created. And she had a picture of her and her husband, and they were hugging and her eyes were closed. And I thought, okay, that is a beautiful photo. And that's something that I kind of wanted to take a picture of. And something that I do each and every day is snuggle my baby. So there's Penny. She was on her little doggy bed while I was in the craft room. And I just went down and quickly snapped a photo. I didn't take more than maybe two. That was another thing that I tried to do throughout this, just make it work. And I didn't try to get the most perfect photo. I just tried to get a realistic one. This one worked out great. Both of our eyes are closed. And I thought that that was really, really cute. And I loved the way that this one turned out. So with this um, photo, it inspired my story, which is about Penny. So it also tells the story of my day around the house day in and day out. And that Penny is like my sidekick. She's my shadow. She's always there with me. But with telling the story of her, it also tells the story of my life right now, how my daily life goes about, which I really love. Also, I love this paper from Pink Fresh. And this was a really cute one. There's always a reason to smile. I thought that that was cute to put there in the middle. Found washi that worked. Again, same kind of format. So it's pretty easy to put together. Now for this one, it was half a face and I didn't honestly get crazy creative with this one. I was in the craft room and I thought, what better to do than to hold up my Hobonichi and just take a picture of half my face. Of course, you could do all kinds of different things. You could definitely hold up different objects. You could also take a selfie and then crop it to just show half your face. Or I think Allie's was like a side profile. So there's so many different things you can do, but I did want to talk about my crafty journey since this book was about me and that's a huge part of my life right now. So I thought that this was the perfect spot to do that was with the half face prompt. So I have this photo here again the smaller photo decorated the larger excuse me the larger side and then here I talked about my projects, my craft room, sharing things publicly, how long I've been doing this now, you know how it's such a big part of my life currently. So same thing, but really enjoying all these different little stories that I am able to tell. Then moving on to full body, which this is the one that made me quake. I was like, oh no, I do not want to have to take a full body photo because, you know, with those, I always like to make sure that I'm in the perfect outfit, take a million photos, pick the one that I like the most, try to get all the angles and all that kind of stuff. But for this one, I really just put my self timer on my phone, my iPhone, of course, all of these were just taken with my phone and just snapped a photo. I think maybe I snapped two. I was like, this one works. Of course, again, you could get a candid photo if you are more candid style photo person. For this one, I didn't mind not taking candid photos because um, I kind of a lot of times prefer non-candid photos. I mean, I, I get the point of 
showing off your real life. But for me, I kind of like this style of photo more. And I knew that I was taking these pictures of myself. So I didn't mind looking at the camera and kind of doing a ta-da pose for myself. Plus, I really like that you can see our living room in the background. I think that that's really cute. And this is the way I look most days. My comfy leggings, comfy shirt, and again, my socks with my house shoes, prancing around the house trying to get all of the things done. So that's kind of what I wrote here. And I did kind of just talk about body image and things like that there for the full body prompt. And then moving on to the last prompt, this was definitely my favorite one, and it was reflection. So I think that this one kind of can go two ways, the more literal, you're taking a reflection photo, or the more figurative, like you're reflecting on this year, this project, yourself right now, whatever. But I think you can still pair a photo of a reflection with that type of journaling if that's what you wanted to do. But I had a lot of fun with this photo in general because I have a few mirrors around the house, as I'm sure a lot of us do, but I've taken a lot of pictures in those typical mirrors, the one in the bathroom, the one in our living room, like the bigger one in our little entryway area. But we have this mirror. It's like this decorative piece that's above a hutch in our living room that actually has a small little mirror in the middle of it. And it's a vintage kind of like little Spudnik art piece that I got at a thrift store years and years ago and painted it blue. So I thought, what if I climb on a chair really quick and I snap a photo of myself inside that small mirror? And I love the way that it ended up looking. It's almost like a fish eye view, which I thought was fun. It has a living room behind it. I love that all of these photos were just taken around the house because again, it's very true to my life. And I thought that that was just a fun photo. It, it made me smile. And then I kind of just leaned into the blues, adding a pop of yellow. And I noticed that for Allie's journaling, again, she used the prompt, I see someone who, and talked about, you know, what she was seeing in her reflection. So that's exactly what I did. So for this last one, I said, in this reflection, I see someone who loves color, art, design, who thrives off of an aesthetic atmosphere. I see someone who is youthful and fun, who still feels 24 and will never give up that spark as the years continue. I see someone who loves to read, write, and make, someone who has always kept themselves busy with little projects and who thrives when creating. I see someone who loves to be home, who, who enjoys all of life's tiny joys, someone who takes delight in the every day. So that was kind of my ending there. And then you have just a couple other pages and the end of the book. So it's a quick and easy project. It doesn't take a lot of time, like I said, to put together. And you could actually take the pictures and jot down the journaling throughout a week or a month or whenever you want to do the project. And then when you come back and try to put it all together, I feel like that task was pretty easy. So it was really fun. And now I'm all caught up with all four of the these documenting projects here. Pieces of me, Pieces of Home, The Odd Man Out that I had to make my own for there. Pieces of the Past and then also Pieces of Play. And I'm very excited because Allie did mention in one of her more recent videos that this year I think we're going to be doing Pieces of Joy and Pieces of Us. So I cannot wait to start both of those. And I will definitely be sharing with you guys over here on YouTube. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like. Please also consider subscribing and I will talk to you soon. Bye y'all.